aging men of the 692nd. I didn't believe in kill, but uh, you had to kill or be killed. From all walks of life. Unless you've been there, you can, you, you know, the, you can't explain it to anybody. They are six decades removed from fighting on distant battlefields. I was never homesick like some people were. Yet the memories of these graying warriors remain razor sharp. If you're not scared, you're crazy. At the outbreak of World War II, the young men in their late teens and early 20s who would make up the unit answer the call to serve. In the fall of 1944, the soldiers of the 692nd Tank Destroyer Battalion land in war-torn France. Their mission, push their way across Europe, hammer German tanks with artillery, and help liberate a continent from Hitler's steel grasp. Now, more than 60 years later, the old soldiers of the 692nd are still serving in a way, serving as my surrogate grandfathers. He looks very dashing in his uniform. In the summer of 2004, my uncle Bill revealed something astonishing. His brother-in-law, my grandfather, William McQuaid, served with distinction in the war as captain of A Company in the 692nd. He was always good natured. I never had the pleasure of meeting my grandfather. Captain William McQuaid died in 1961 when he was just 47 years old, eight years before I was born. He was a good guy. He was a good I liked Bill very much. Learning about my grandfather's military service piqued my interest. I needed to know more about this man I never knew. What kind of soldier was he? What did my grandfather's unit experience in battle? Was Captain McQuaid a good leader? For answers, I needed to find the veterans he fought shoulder to shoulder with. For several weeks, though, my search for surviving members of the 692nd proves fruitless. Dead end after dead end. Disconnected lines or unanswered calls greet every number dialed. But I keep looking. My luck changes when Ray Zander picks up the phone. If you uh, grab any A-company man there, they'll talk about him. Jackpot. Armed with a video camera and a growing list of questions, I travel to Michigan looking for answers. The jolly veteran delivers. Seek, strike, destroy, and go like hell. <laughs> the New Jersey native remembers my grandfather as a no-nonsense, smart soldier. Xander's detailed recollections help paint a better picture of Captain McQuaid. When uh, uh, an officer like got the respect of all the men, he's, he had it made. Uh, he knew he was a good soldier. During my history lesson, this former tank crew member steers the conversation from topic to topic, like the time he shot down a German fighter plane with a machine gun, earning him a silver star. We lost uh, 47 infantry boys there. Got clobbered there. Xander also shares intimate details about the unit's close calls and the horrors they witness. Stories that leave me breathless. It wasn't the strong smell of somebody that got killed right away, but it was death. It was death smell. On April 29th, 1945, my grandfather's battalion rolls into hell on earth. The 692nd helps liberate Dachau. Anybody can do something like that. I mean, uh, uh. Dachau, one of the war's most infamous concentration camps, a place where tens of thousands would die. Ray Zander is still haunted by that dark day. There was hardly anything left of them bodies, you know. Just what did my grandfather see? Those answers lost to history. Talking now, you think back, man, how the hell anybody can do something like that, eh? Ray Zander would become instrumental in my search for members of the 692nd. The 83-year-old keeps an updated roster of surviving members. It's clear he doesn't want us to forget. The 692nd is not actually going to die when we're all gone.
because you still got information on them, you know what I mean? In March, I hit the road carrying Xander's information to track down another proud veteran. In Cornelius, North Carolina, I find a humble hero. I never wanted much for water. And uh, I can remember just pulling out of harbor early in the morning and going by the Statue of Liberty. And uh, that was, uh, I still get emotional about it. Herb Knox recalls Captain McQuaid as a tough but fair leader. He took his job, his responsibility, seriously. He, I say, a decent guy. Uh, and, and if you've ever been in service and say decent, that, that covers a whole lot of territory. Herb Knox also remembers the day the 692nd liberated Dachau, a memory he'd like to erase. Smell. Smell was awful. Can't describe, but uh, uh, what, what they went to. The 18-year-old farm boy from the Tar Heel State would certainly leave his mark in Europe. For heroically repelling a German attack by himself, the modest Herb Knox would become the highest decorated soldier in the battalion, earning the Distinguished Service Cross, second only to the Medal of Honor. We managed. We managed pretty good. Through Knox's and Xander's words, my grandfather was suddenly coming alive, more than just a figure on a grainy black and white photograph. In digging up the past, I make another astounding discovery. I locate my grandfather's younger sister, Christine. The next chapter in my journey would take me to Arlington, Massachusetts. This would be the very first time I would meet my aunt, Chris. She shares photos and stories about her beloved big brother. I had known my aunt, Chris, for just a few hours. Yet at the end of our long overdue meeting, she gives me something she's been holding on to for 45 years. Through her tears, she places in my hand my grandfather's rosary beads, the ones he carried with him through the war, and his dog tags, the ones he wore in battle. My aunt believes her brother played a big role in our coming together. She says he would want me to have them. My journey of personal discovery is just beginning. Just who really is this smiling soldier in the photograph? I've been searching for the answer for more than two years. We know the 31-year-old led A Company of the 692nd during World War II, fighting Germans, helping to liberate conquered countries, and earning the respect of his men. It's these soldiers who hold the answer I'm looking for. Now, more than 60 years later, the surviving members of the 692nd Tank Destroyer Battalion are living all across America. I've promised myself to try and meet each and every one of the men so they can tell me about one of their leaders, a man they would have called Captain, a man I would have called Grandfather. I never had the pleasure of meeting my grandfather. William McQuaid died in 1961 at age 47, eight years before this reporter was born. For the past several months, I've been crisscrossing the country, from North Carolina to Maryland to Massachusetts. I need to hear the stories about Captain McQuaid before it's too late. In October of this year, I find myself traveling to Pennsylvania. Along Route 24, on a sprawling farm in York, I meet an authority on the 692nd. Everybody knew that McQuaid was, was our citizen the best officer. Author Charles George penned Journey to Dachau 10 years ago, a book detailing the harrowing experiences of the unit. But we knew we were going into a real hell. Mr. George knows his subject all too well. And I couldn't understand why we wouldn't be killed. The 84-year-old veteran served as my grandfather's sergeant, directing artillery fire during some of the fiercest fighting of the war. McQuaid was the only one that seemed to me to have real, both uh, courage and common sense. Charles George was promoted on the battlefield by my grandfather after Lieutenant Gregory Dahlman was killed in action. I remember when Dahlman was killed, how uh, 
both of us were very emotional about it because it was the first, it was our first actual uh, casualty. To Charles George, Captain McQuaid was more than just a superior officer. He was a friend. He just took a god awful day by day situation and made the best of them. George remembers my grandfather as a fearless but compassionate leader who risked court martial to protect his own men from suicidal missions. And he saved lots of lives. I am so fortunate. Mr. George's words breathe life into the grandfather I know only from fading photographs. His stories I will cherish forever. He handled fear better, certainly, than I did. If McQuaid hadn't been there, then I don't know whether I would have made it or not. In August, my odyssey pulls me to middle America. Here, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I meet more men who will take me down memory lane. For 35 years, the old soldiers of the 692nd have been gathering in different places across America. This year, I got an invitation to the reunion. For years, especially when my kids were growing up, we, we, we never talked about the war. I am honored as Cliff Carlin, Bob Link, Walt Gower, among other veterans, welcome me as one of their own. You guys going? They're a little bit slower and a bit more gray. But once these aging fighters meet, the years fall away and a flood of memories wash over them. I thought that was kind of scary. Looking through these pages and hearing their tales, I learned so much more about the battalion and what Captain McQuaid survived. I can't help but think of how much my grandfather might enjoy being here, reminiscing with his fellow soldiers. Hey, what's that? They shoot the breeze about brushes with death, battles won, and buddies lost. Germans aren't the enemy now, it's father time. Arriving at the reunion, I meet complete strangers. I leave three days later with grandfathers I never had. Meeting the aging soldiers of the 692nd fills in so many blanks, answers so many questions. Still, there remains one more soldier I need to see. To locate him, I travel to the Boston suburb of Medford. I find him in a small corner of a place called Oak Grove, among others at rest. There, for the first time, I find the grave of my grandfather, Lieutenant Colonel William McQuaid. My long quest nearly done. I want to thank him and tell him I finally know who the smiling soldier in the photograph really is. He is my hero.